everybody, welcome back to Sleecraft Sunday. If you haven't been here before, please check out some of the other videos. This is a really cool boat. It's a 1986 Sleecraft SST Mod VP. We've done a full composite build on this thing. There's pretty much no wood left in this boat. And it's a lot lighter than stock. Like, check this out. <laughs> With me sitting on it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I forgot that's just not a wood thing. <laughs> like how I left off. <laughs> in this episode, we are going to be installing this composite honeycomb floor. We are going to show you how to adhere it to the top of the tunnels and the stringer. And we are going to fair in the whole thing and glass it in with two layers of glass. We're also going to go boating in the other sleek craft and have a malfunction, which ultimately results in me going swimming with my phone in my pocket. So anyway, let's get to it. So I wanted to add a tiny bit more beef to this transom. I took some of the biaxial scraps I had and I made these tabbed squares which I'm going to put on the top edges of the knees and the stringer where they meet the transom. I had some other scraps, I'm just going to beef up this joint from behind. When you think about this transom flexing that way with a ton of force, I want to stop that movement. So I'm going to use these big scraps right here in this corner and then I have this super funky shape right here that's just going to strengthen that joint keep everything square. And then I have these two big sheets of biax that I'm just going to beef up that main tunnel to transom uh, joint right there. And it's going to extend past the woven roven. So these are some big guys. So this thing should be going nowhere. All right, so what we are doing right now is trying to figure out how to brace the floor where the two floor panels come together. So we're gonna throw this in the boat quick. Is it overlapping on that, this piece? Wow, it actually looks really good. Is that where you wanted it? So we just need to notch out here a little? Yeah. Okay, but it, this is where it's gonna be? Yep. Okay. And then I'm just going to run another little piece of kusa at a diagonal here and here. We could try to do it perfectly straight, but the tolerance of getting this in exactly the right spot might be annoying. And I just figure if you just run something diagonally here, you're definitely going to get it there and there and there. Where's it going? Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right, that's definitely not the prettiest job I've done, but hey, no one's gonna see it, right? All right, so the floor is in here, and Sarah just sharpied this. We have a trim a little bit more. 
my medicine. And then this back edge is going to sit nicely on this Kusa brace. So we'll be able to glass into that as well. Why don't you jigsaw it? And there's a jigsaw right next to you. There is a jigsaw right next to me. So is it coming all the way to the edge or not? No. You're, we're not no, glassing we're, straight down. No, we need to round it. Okay, with the goober. Right? Yes. Like, does that look straight? I don't Where know. Where is the panel look? Like that was... Oh, so this we is what used... we did. We had done this mark. Oh, yeah. So this okay. mark goes on the center of the there stringer you know. because I'm assuming that the set the stringer is centered in this boat at we're least. We're gonna we're gonna pretend that the stringer is centered. Muscles. <laughs> so heavy. I should tell people how light the stuff is so that I could lift it like that. So because because the knees are at an angle, you have to slide it into place. So what's going on over here, Sarah? Uh, so I'm laying out like a my own little puzzle. Um, how we're going to put boards on top of the panel, and then rocks or heavy weights and things on top of that for strategic points to um, weight it down as it cures once we put the. Right, and you can see here, yeah. we're not putting weight there yeah, or this there. Is the tunnels. <laughs> so, so it's pretty much just on the stringer and the tunnels, and then those two cross braces. Yeah. Ready? Uh, stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Why does this always go until night? Yeah, we, that was predictable. What was the hardest part? Uh, navigating the board in without smearing all of the resin out of the way. That took some coordinating. Yeah. Yeah. What we wound up doing was slipping it underneath the steering wheel and the wiring and then pushing down on the back while lifting the front to try to like oh. get it to... Yeah. There was a whole maneuvering that happened. <laughs> I think it looks pretty good now, so... We, we basically just threw everything in here that weighed something. We could probably still wait on the back. You know what I remembered we forgot? What? The uh, propane tanks. Oh yeah. Those are pretty heavy. Think we need to? Or you I, think think, it's... I think it's pretty good back here now. I mean, it doesn't look like it went anywhere. I can just sit back here for a while if you want. 
And you're sleeping there. <laughs> no, that looks that looks pretty awesome. Unlimited horsepower potential. <laughs> And we have a bunch of rocks under there, some disc brakes, some jugs of water, some tools. It's a floor. <laughs> All right, let's see what it looks like tomorrow. Today was challenging. What? What? Let's do a recap. What happened, Sarah? Uh, we needed to move my beetle out of the way in the driveway to move the to move boats around. And then we got the boat, the blue boat, where it needed to be. We got in this boat, and we booked over here. And what was the first thing that went wrong? Oh, I know. I forgot the tunes. I, I, I'm a big, <laughs> Set the stage. Yeah, I, I think that people who add stereos to these kind of boats, it, it isn't correct. Because it doesn't doesn't ever look, period. And also, if you have an engine like that, you can't use it when you're driving anyway. Like, it's just not possible. So, uh, I think a Bluetooth speaker in this situation, a good one, is awesome. So we forgot that. And then we got the boat in the water. And right away, when I was trying to start it, the uh, throttle cable mount snapped, which is a zip tie. Um, and so I had to re-zip tie it. And then we got the, the thing started and into the water, away from the pier, running, and it wouldn't trim down. It was just not trimming down, it just wouldn't. And this happened to me once before, when I trimmed all the way up, it just like locks itself. And the only way to fix it is with a wrench and pulling the trim ram uh, hoses off the cylinders and letting the weight of the, the stern drive push down on the cylinders. And then once it's away from that fully upright position, it works again. Well, we forgot all the tools. So while in the water, I even tried um, like stand the boat off, obviously, but like standing on the the stern drive and like kind of jumping up and down as he's trying to trim it yeah yeah it's good for the transom yeah. and then the wind was going and oh, yeah. yeah this is this is the best part so trying to move with the thing trimmed fully up is really bad for the u-joint in the bearing. stern drive yeah you can ruin your gimbal bearing you can ruin your u-joint it's just really not good for it they're not designed to be run at a really high trim angle but the wind is going pretty good here and <laughs> we didn't have steering. Yeah, we didn't really have steering because the thing was almost out of the water. So I patted down my pockets and jumped in the water and swam her home. And right when I got out on the pier, I realized my phone was in my pocket. So all in all, pretty stellar day. But I mean, round two, fight. Yes. We're here. Yes. Can't show around. We're, we're here. Yes, we're, we're on the water. Yeah, this thing looks great. I love this boat. Really excited about that one too. What up, Lex? So what happened, if you ever have a stuck stern drive alpha, 
Um, I don't know why they do this, but when it's in full uh, tilt and it won't go back down, what you need to do is loosen the lower nut on the trim ram and just let some oil leak out. And once it gets away from that full trimmed out position, it'll work again. I don't know what's up with that. Who knows? Yeah, good day on the water. A bit abbreviated, but whatever. I'm gonna take it. It's end of season, so let's get it while we can. All right, so right now we're trying to figure out our plan of attack. It is Sunday morning because we didn't finish last night, so it's getting dark. We want to get two layers of medium weight glass on this, and we want to fair in the sides so that the glass wraps nicely down onto the side of the tunnel. Because right now it's just that raw edge. We also have to get the glass coming back here on these tabs. So what we were thinking was doing a separate one back here with a seam pretty much like right there. And then up here, in order to do take two layers, I think the challenge from my perspective is in order to do it well up there, you need to get under there, right? Right, and you wanted to do both layers, like one after the other while it was still setting up so it's still tacky, right? Right, I can't lay on the tacky stuff if we do this all in one sheet. So I think we should do two layers up there to start. Right, and like a panel. Yeah, maybe yeah. to like pretty much under the dash. Yeah. And then one big, that, and that's enough to be messing the, with anyway, one big sheet right here. We'll see how it goes. Let's start with the baby ones. Okay. boys we got a floor look at that all right Sarah so post post floor interview I'm floored by how well this turned out um, but uh, what was the what was, what was the big takeaway here the lighter weight cloth was a little fidgety like you had to do little tugs to keep the weave straight with and not have bubbles um, where we've been using some of the heavier stuff um, that wasn't quite as big of an issue but right when it was heavier weight you could almost roll out the bubbles but with this it would like the bubble would fold on itself so what you wanted to do was just like go to the very edge of the fabric and just do a little tug and it was like <laughs> four feet away that bubble would go away yeah. it was kind of cool yeah. so this is two layers of eight ounce cloth so that's 16 ounce layer of cloth on the top I think that'll be fine I don't know I hope so if this is way too thin I'm gonna break it right away like someone let me know but <laughs> All right, so that's about it for this episode. We have the floor completely glassed in. There is a rainstorm coming, so we're gonna have to try to figure out how to make this waterproof while all the, the resin is curing, which is cool. Um, I don't know what we're doing next week, but we're gonna, you know, keep pitter-pattering, so. 
All right, cheers. Till next time. It's gonna be a great butt shot. Yeah.